Nun Zayin Amud Beis 57b. We are um, uh, the last few lines. The Gemara now deals with the Mishnah, which says that at the end of the Avodah, after coming out of the base, Kachi uh, Akadashim, the Holy of Holies, and spritzing the bull blood and then the goat blood towards the um, uh, towards the Baruchas, towards the curtain between the Kodesh and the Kodesh he would then mix the blood and bring it to the Mizbeach, as we'll see in the next Mishnah, to um, uh, spritz it on the Mizbeach, or to put it on the corners of the Mizbeach and then spritz it on the Mizbeach. And we saw Machlokes between uh, Rabbi uh, Yashia and uh, Rabbi Yenison, if he would mix the bloods beforehand uh, or he would not mix the bloods beforehand. And this is based on a general uh, question in the Torah, where the Torah says two things. Um, as a part of a mitzvah or a part of prohibition, uh, do we assume each one separately unless the Torah said it to, that you must put it together, or we assume that it's together unless the Torah indicates that it's separate? Where do we find this? The Torah says a prohibition of cursing one's parents. Um, there's no Hebrew word for parents, it says um, cursing one's father or one's mother. So there it says cursing father or mother, so, uh, and mother, it says. Uh, does it mean both, cursing a father and mother? Or does it, and so if one cursed just their father, or one cursed just their mother, that would not be a Torah prohibition. Or do we say, no, that it means uh, cursing one's father or one's mother. Uh, and it would be either. Now, the Torah also repeats this prohibition, and there it says, um, of the Imekilo. He cursed his father uh, or his mother. Oh no, his mother, his father, he cursed. So there the word cursed is near the mother, and at the beginning it's the the uh, curse is near the father. So one opinion says that tells us that each one individually is a prohibition. Cursing one's mother or cursing one's father would be the prohibition. Um, thank you. Uh, the the uh, indication is that if the Torah had not said you curse uh, this person uh, cursed their father or the mother or the father or the mother they have cursed, which indicates that the cursing is both for the uh, either for the father alone or the mother alone, I would have assumed that it has to be that they did it together. Both were cursed, but if they cursed just the father, just the mother, it's not included. Meaning, when the Torah says two things, it means they're together. The same over here. In regards to where the Torah says that he's going to uh, um, take of the blood of the bull and of the goat, it means that he took them together. Whereas the other opinion says that uh, that no, it uh, when it says he cursed his father or uh, and his mother it means either. And so to over here when it says he took of the blood, he will take of the blood of the bull and the goat. It means of either or separately. So let's prove. The Gemara is going to say, let's test him, the Rabbi Yashia, who the Amar Ma'arvin. Rabbi Yashia is the one that says he put them together. The Amar, because he's the one that says over there in regards to the prohibition of cursing a parent. The Amar, Alpha Gav, the Lake Siv Yachtov, even though it doesn't say them together, Commander Siv Yachtov, dummy. It's as if it said it together, and therefore, uh, when it says he curses father's mother, it means both. So to over here, in regards to the blo- uh, bull's blood and, and goat's blood, even though it says that he will spritz, spritz of uh, the blood of the uh, uh, the uh, uh, bull and the goat, it means together. Yamara uh-huh. says, I feel a Rabbi Yonason. No, this is not sufficient proof because I can even say this is the opinion of Rabbi Yonason. Shani uh, Hacha, here it's different, the Chsiv Achas. It says it will do it once a year. If you do it once a year, that means that, it, that it, you, you, it's being done alone. Once a year, being done alone and not being done um, together. Uh, sorry, once alone must be that it's done together. It can't be done separately because then it won't be once. The fact that it says once a year means that it's being done uh, um, together so that you only have one one, one time that he's doing this. Tan in the Lake Even though that, that is a 
the answer that could be valid. We don't have any. Um, uh, uh, we don't have any uh, um, uh, proof from the the logical argument. We do have an argu- We do have a brisa that tells us that it, the other way around. And indeed, it is Rabbi Yashe who says that it, it it must be put together. The brisa says like this: He will take of the blood of the bull and of the blood of the goat. Which, it, it, which tells us that it is mixed together, the blood of the bull and the blood of the goat. So here we have clearly that Rabbi Yashin, the one that says that it have to be put together. Now we go to 58a, Nun Ches Hamad Aleph. Rabbi Yonison, I'm Rabbi Yonison, says, Mizebef in the Atzma, Mizebef in the Atzma. He's going to take and spritz on the Mizbeach, um, uh, each one alone. First, the, the bull's blood and then the goat's blood. Rabbi Yashi said, how can you say that? It says that he will do this once a year. If he's going to take each one separately, it's going to be more than once. Yeah, but it also says of the blood of the bull and of the blood of the goat, which he understands to mean individually, separately. So he says, so why did the Torah say you do it once, which indicates that it's going to be done together and a single time. To tell you, you can only do once of the bull and once with the blood of the goat, and that's it. Tani Idach, we have another Braisa, it says like this. He will take of the blood of the goat and uh, bull and the blood of the goat. How will he take of them both? They will be mixed together. So Gemara says, the Brisa responds and says, Atoimir, You say that it means that they're together. Maybe it's not so. Perhaps each one separately. So therefore, the Torah says he will do this once a year, and the fact that it says once must be that he's doing them together, because otherwise he'll do it, he'll be spritzing more than once on the mizbeach. Stomach of Rabbi Yashi, and this unattributed brisa is like the opinion of Rabbi Yashi. Menasa nasamale bereka. The Mishnah continued and said that he will, after he mixes the bloods, he will put the full one in the uh, empty one. Now it does say. Full one of what? How, what does it mean? Put the full one in the empty. One. So there are two ways of reading this. It can either mean that he will take the uh, full basin and put it in, it, it insert it into the empty basin, and he now has two two basins, two buckets uh, that that uh, um, are one inside the other, and then all the mixed blood combined is in the inner one, and the outer one is sort of uh, is the empty one. So that's what it means. He's going to take the actual bucket and put it inside the other one. I think Amara then is going to ask, is this a valid way of doing the Avodah? Having a, a, a two buckets, uh, one inside the other. Why would it not be in a, a valid way? Number one, because the coin has to be holding the basin, but he's holding the outer basin, which doesn't have any blood in it anymore. The blood is in an inner basin. So is that a chatzitza, a barrier between his holding the basin and the basin that's holding the blood. Also, is it appropriate to do the Avaida this way? So we'll see in a, in a moment uh, the, the question about that. Um, but in the end, Ingmar says that's not what it means at all. It doesn't mean that he will put the the outer, the, the full basin inside an, a, a, an empty basin. And so now he's holding two basins. But rather what it means is he will now take the full basin and pour it and empty it into the empty basin. And why would he do that? To mix the bloods well. Because uh, bloods are pretty thick, and so if he pours the blood of the uh, uh, of the one, the, boat, the, the bull, into the goat, or vice versa, uh, they won't necessarily um, mix well. So he's going to pour it back into the other way so that it mixes more. So let's see. The, that's the, the short of it. Let's see it inside. Put the full one into the empty one. 
Rabbi Bacham asked a general question for Rabbi Is this valid? If he takes an empty basin and he puts it into another uh, empty basin and then he receives the blood in that, spritzes the blood with that. So he's got uh, one basin inside another basin. Is it valid or not? What's the halacha? Min bamino do we say that even though that the basins are both made of the same material, nevertheless, one is a barrier to the other, and therefore he's holding an empty basin, and the full basin that has the, uh, uh, that, uh, that has the blood in it, it doesn't count as him holding it because there's a barrier between them. Or do we say, no, since they're the same material, it's essentially one and the same, and the same material is not considered a, a barrier. Min beminoi. Uh, one kind with its own kind. It's not a chatzitz. Amalei Tirisua. So he said, I can prove it to you from a bryson. We learned, Nasana Samalei Bereka. Sorry, our Mishnah. In our Mishnah, we said, he put the full basin in the empty basin. And he's learning that the meaning of our Mishnah is that he puts the inserts, the uh, the uh, full basin into the empty basin, and yet it's going to be valid. The Gemara my lav, wouldn't you say it means that he inserted the out the, the full basin into the uh, uh, empty basin, and it's going to count as a valid uh, spritzing from it? So it says, no, That's not the meaning of our Mishnah. Our Mishnah actually means he emptied the full basin into the uh, uh, into the uh, empty basin. Not that he uh, he inserted the basin into the empty basin. Or rather, he emptied it into it. Altani le'eresha. Well, that we already learned. Ira dam apar l'tech We already said that he's going to put the bull's blood into the goat's blood. Why would he do it again? They larva yafa yafa in order for them to mix well. Okay, so back to our question: Does is it valid to have the um, the the um, two basins, one inside the other, as a form of doing the avodah? Somebody standing, a kohen, is doing the avayda. We know that in order to do the avayda, the kohen had to be barefoot. And as Rashi explains over here, a part of that is that everything has to be done within a service vessel. Now, uh, the floor acts as a service vessel for the kohen. The kohen standing directly on the floor means that he is um, in or on a a sanctified um, a space. Uh, but if he's wearing shoes, that's a barrier between that. If he's stepping on a vessel, there's a barrier between that. If he's stepping on another coin's foot, that's a barrier. That's what it says. Hustle. It's going to be invalid. So you see that even min beminai is chaitzitz, even two of the same material, he's stepping, which is foot upon foot, or or human and con human, and it's going to count as a barrier. Well, I says, oh, no, you can't compare those things. Shiny rega the lematzim avatale. It's a foot. You can't nullify that and say that it's nothing. But an outer basin and an inner basin, that one basin inside the other, you can say that they are one in the same material and one is nullified to the other. It's essentially just a part of the other. You can't say that with a human, uh, uh, with a foot. Ekada Amri, there are those that say, his question wasn't whether you're allowed to do it or not because of chatzitza, because of a barrier, or rather, is this respectable and honorable? This, is this an appropriate way to do the service? Is this a proper way of doing the avodah, uh, the service of the Besamikdash, to have two, uh, uh, two vessels, one inside the other? Or do we say, no, you have to have a single vessel, that's a derech kavod, that's a derech, uh, uh, the proper honorable way of doing the service. And to that, we said, Toshima, come in here, the Tana the Rabbi Shmuel. We have an acad- a, a, a teaching from the Academy of Rabbi Shmuel. As kol kalei hashores asher yisharsu bom bakodesh. It says, all the vessels of shores, of service, which you will use it for kodesh, uh, for the holy. Now it says, 
all the vessels, plural, that you will use it in the singular. That means that it, it, a single service will be uh, it, it's, it's a single service for multiple vessels. That even though you're holding multiple vessels, Kalkaliasharis, it does count as a single Avaida. Shnei Kalim, two vessels, Vesheris Achas, and one service, and that's going to be valid. So he says, indeed, that would count as a valid form of Avaida. Now, Rabbi Bahama asks a further question based on this chatzitza idea on a barrier of question. Fine. So perhaps if you have one vessel inside the other vessel, they're both metal, they're both the same material. It counts as if you're holding the vessel at, that holds the blood. What happens if you put um, some, some uh, um, uh, twigs around the, around the, uh, um, the date palm at the bottom of the tree, so they have like this, um, uh, like a mesh. That's right. It's like a, a like a mesh, uh, uh, call it the weed or something. It's, it's like a vine that's around its mesh. And if you take that and you put it inside your the, the vessel, the blood will get through it and beneath it but it, it, it's another, it's not a vessel, it's a, it has holes, but it's another thing inside the vessel. Is that a barrier? Or do we say, no, the blood can get through and beneath it, so it's not a barrier. But there's something else in the vessel that you're pouring the blood into. Does that count as a barrier or not? He received the blood in this vessel that has this sieve, this mesh in it. Now, if we say there are two different materials and so it's a barrier. Since it can get the root to the bottom, it's not a chatzitza. Uh, it's not a chatzitza. Or who cares? You have another thing in the vessel, so it's going to be a chatzitza. On my late Tanisui, I said this too, we've learned. So this is in regards to uh, um, fresh water from a spring that they would gather for the red heifer water for the Eferparaduma. So it has to be um, pure, not um, um, fresh water. So they would take a, a shekes, like a, a trough that had a hole at the uh, end of it and put it near the stream. This way, as the stream is running, some of the water will, would run into the trough. Now, in this trough, they had a sponge and the, the water is getting through the sponge because that's what it does, but it's also absorbed in the sponge. Is that a barrier or not? So it says, He will, uh, will um, uh, uh, agitate the water, push the water until it gets past the sponge. And then you can receive the, blood, the, the water from there into the vessel that needs to go into the the, the red heifer water that the red heifer, the red heifer ash is going to go into, and that's going to be fine, even though there's a a, a, a sponge between, right? So that should be a barrier from the spring into your vessel. Nevertheless, it's it, it's going to be valid. So you see that you have far material; it's not going to count as a barrier as long as the water can get through it. The water says no. Maybe water is different. Shiny mayim. What is different? The kalishi, it's very thin. And so it's not viscous. It's, it's not so um, uh, thick. And uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it doesn't congeal. And so, yes, if it goes through the sponge that easily, that's going to count as, uh, as valid um, connection. However, in regards to blood, um, it's much thicker than that. And so even though it can get through the mesh and beneath the mesh, but whatever's not through the mesh, is actually um, thick and, and blocked, and maybe that counts as a barrier. Some say this was indeed the conclusion that he had, but dam, kosher, that with blood, it's going to be valid because the water gets, just like water gets through, the blood gets through to the other side, through the mesh, and it's going to count as, uh, as it's in the vessel, not in the mesh, and it's going to be uh, okay. It's not going to count as a barrier. However, 
it will count as a barrier when you put a solid thing in. So the halacha is that you have to take the koimitz, the koim has to take by a meal offering the fistful and put it into a vessel, the vessel sanctifies it. Now, when you have this mesh in there, there's obviously holes where it, it, there is no barrier between the kamitza and the wall of the vessel, but it's not resting and sitting on the wall of the vessel, it's resting and sitting on the mesh with holes directly to the to the uh, vessel, and that will count as a barrier in the kamitz, also the kamitz, it's invalid. Okay. <clears throat> I just also wondered, how many mesh mites uh, for some of the two types of blood? I mean, in terms of this maybe one is thicker they're, they're different they may be different from each other and that's separate maybe the goat blood runs through quicker than the bull's blood and perhaps no idea the gemara does not suggest that and in the end says that it's okay we turn to nun chesam and base 58 b uh, the next mission for this mission we have to um uh go back to some some spatial awareness. So the Koyen now, as opposed to when the Koyen Gadol comes into the Beis HaMikdash, he's coming from the <coughs> east towards the west and with the uh, with on the north side he has the tables, on the south side he has the menorah, and straight ahead of him he would have the Mizbeach. Now he's coming the other way. He's coming from the uh, Kodesh HaKadoshim out towards the door because he's already spritzed on the Mizbeach and he did that between, uh, sorry, he already spritzed on the Kaporis on the curtain, which is, uh, and as we're about to learn, and he did that standing in the inner part of the room, which is between the Mizbeach and the Kaporis and the uh, uh, and the Parochis and the curtain. So he's standing between the Mizbeach and the Parochis in the front part of the room and he spritzed, and now he turns around facing east, his back to west, and he's going to walk towards the Mizbeach, the altar. This golden altar, the Mizbeach Mizbeach HaKteris, is actually um, one amma by one amma, about a foot and a half by a foot and a half uh, square, and um, the height is is, uh, two ammas high. So uh, two ammas about uh, let's say three feet or so. Uh, it's a tripping hazard. Okay. Uh, it's a mizbeach. It's a small altar there in the center. You can't help but notice it. It's a golden altar in the middle of the room. Right? Um, now, he, the kain has to do two things uh, with it. He has to put with his finger, rub some blood on each of the four corners, and he, and he has to then clear some space in the uh, on the surface of the top of the altar and spritz seven times on it. So two things, placing some with his finger on each one of the corners and uh, spritz on the center. There are two ways of placing on the corners. He can walk around and place some on each corner. He can lean over and uh, because it's small enough, Right? It's, it's two amas high. His torso is about three amas high. So he can lean over uh, and put some on each corner. Now, if he does, if he comes to each corner alone, he's going to walk around. We're going to have to know where he's going to start, where he's going to end. Right? Um, well, either way, we're going to have to know where he starts, where he ends. But, but he, we're going to have to know which way he goes around and where he goes, or he can stand in one place and lean over. But it also is going to make a difference on how he's going to do it. If he's standing stationary one side of the altar and leaning over and rubbing some blood on the corner, he's going to come from the lower part upward. If he's standing at the corner itself, he's going to be from the up uh, from the top downward. Um, if he uh, 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 there's also concern that the blood would drip drip on his sleeve and make the white garment uh, dirty, so. So uh, that's a consideration as well. So we'll see both of these versions of the Gemara. V'yatza, the Mishnah begins, V'yatza el HaMizbeach. It says, and he will go out towards the Mizbeach. Go out towards the Mizbeach, again, because he was in the Kodesh HaKadoshim. 
the Holy of Holies, which is most east, most west. He came out from there, and he would then between the Mizbeach and the uh, and the curtain and the and the, uh, the parochis, he would spritz blood against it. Then he would turn back towards the east and walk towards the Mizbeach. So he's going out from in front of the Mizbeach. To, uh, he's going out to the Mizbeach, outward to the east, to the to the exit of the room. And he's going to the Mizbeach, which is in front of Hashem. Zem Mizbeach Hazav. So what's the Mizbeach are we talking about? That's the one in the Kodesh, not the one out in the courtyard. It's the one in the, in the Kodesh itself. Hischel Mechate V'yorim. So he would begin um, spritzing, uh, uh, sorry, uh, rubbing, uh, putting the blood on it downward. V'yorim, going downward. So this indicates that he's not leaning over and pulling his finger up on the corner, but rather he's at each corner and going down. This is on the outside of the Mizbeach. On the corner of the Mizbeach. On the, corner, on the, the, on the out corners, <clears throat> correct. On the, um, on the face of it, if you would. Mehechanu right. So where would he begin? So again, he's coming towards the east. He would pass beyond the Mizbeach, he would walk beyond the Mizbeach. Maschel Miker Mizrach Esvenis. He's going to start on the eastern side, but the northeast. Now, the Gemara is going to say, why does he have to go beyond the Mizbeach? Because it says, Viyatza El Mizbeach. He would go out. That means he has to be beyond the Mizbeach. Because if he's still on the inner side of the Mizbeach, between the Mizbeach and the curtain, then he hasn't gone out of the Mizbeach. He's, he's, he's still on the inner side of the room. So the, the fact that it says the of Mizbeach, he has to go out beyond the Mizbeach. And so he's going to be now um, on the eastern side of the Mizbeach, between the Mizbeach and the opening of the room, and the entrance of the room. Facing the Mizbeach, he's going to now have, he's on the east, he's going to have the northeastern corner, which is closer to, if, uh, to his right, now that he's facing the, uh, the Kodesh, Akadash, and the Holy of Holies again. It, it will be to his right, the uh, the uh, northeastern side, and he will do the northeastern side. So, finest Maravis, northwestern side. Maravis, the right miss, the southwestern side, and right miss Mizrachis, back to the beginning, the uh, uh, um, uh, 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 southeastern side. So, he's going counterclockwise around the Mizbeah. Makim Shu Maskel Bechatos. Uh, and in the outer Mizbeach, by a general sin offering, he will spritz on the southeastern side first. That's where he ends on this uh, uh, golden Mizbeach on Yom Kippur. That's where he would end on Mizbeach on the inner Mizbeach. However, Rabbi Eliezer, he has a different version. He says, he would stay stand in his in place. He didn't. He wouldn't be walking around and doing it, but rather he would stand there on the eastern side of the mizbeach, umechate, and then he would uh, um, uh, put the blood on the corners, rub it on the corners. And so wherever he was doing it, he would be doing from the because he's leaning over. So he would do it from the bottom and rub it up, as opposed to the other way around. Start at the top and going down. Besides for the corner that he's, uh, that's right in front of him, and using his right hand, so that would be the right uh, hand, meaning the, the uh, northeastern corner. That one, he would be going downward. Uh, and as we said, this is a, 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 in part because it's easier and also in part so that his sleeve not get dirty. He's a altar Mizbeach Sheva Pavel. And then he would spritz on the purity of the Mizbeach seven times. The Gemara is going to ask, what does it mean, the purity of the Mizbeach? What is that? The Shiori Adam, after he's done, what would he do with the leftover of the uh, blood that's in the basin? Shefech HaYesed Ma'aravi Shemizbeach HaKitzin. He would go out of the Holy of Holies, of Kedesh Kedashim. He would walk down those 12 stairs to the, to the courtyard. In the courtyard, um, as he's coming down, from west to east, on the right side is the 
uh, large mizbeach in the in, in the courtyard, the regular mizbeach in the courtyard. He would be facing uh, as he comes out the western side of uh, the mizbeach, and uh, on the western side of the southwestern side of the mizbeach is, is at the base of the mizbeach is where he'd pour the blood on the western side of mizbeach. Misham mizbeach achitzayin. And all other karbanas where there was spritzing done on the outer mizbeach, there he would pour the blood onto the base of the mizbeach, but on the southern side of the base, near the near the ramp going up. Elu ve'elu misarvin ba'ama, and either way, this would the blood, the extra blood that he would, the leftover blood that he would pour onto the base would run into the stream. It would mix into the stream that was running out of the uh, out of the base of Mikdash, but it doesn't become nullified. It's blood in the water, but that water is now great fertilizer. It's got animal blood in it, so they would t- take that water, which would go out Lanachal Kidron to the Kidron stream, and it would be sold to um, uh, to uh, uh, farmers for their for their fertilizer. There's me'ila, it's prohibited to benefit from this as kachim without having purchased it, which redeems it from the Kedusha in hands. But if you if you use it without redeeming it out of Kedusha for its value, so then it would be um, me'ila, misuse of kachim. Was it quite a little Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the kahanim were only um, in the courtyard. They, they were. It went once he went into the they samikta should proper into the structure. It was all alone. That's what we saw earlier when when he had said the tefillah in the in the he came out and said a tefillah and he was long in the davening. They got nervous and they came in to get him, they did, thinking that and they said, "Hey, what's taking so long?" He said, "I was davening for you." And they said, "Great, but you, <laughs> yeah, but please, you know, uh, we're nervous out here." Tanarabon. So the Brisa taught the Yatza el Mizbeach. He would go out towards the Mizbeach. What does it mean? Amar Nachemi lefishim betzina bepara ba'al kol mitzvahs, because by a bull that it comes to atone, which is also like what we have here, but by a bull that comes to atone for having transgressed a mitzvah by based and misleading, shekayin oimed chutz le Mizbeach. That the kohen is standing outside of the mizbeach, meaning to the west, to, to the uh, west of the mizbeach. Sorry, to the east of the mizbeach. He's standing outside of the mizbeach, meaning between the entrance and the mizbeach, and from there he spritzes the blood towards the towards the curtain. And as Rashi points out, because the pasuk says um, he would he, he would um, stand. Uh, at the Mizbeach, which is before Hashem, meaning that he is standing outside of the Mizbeach because the Mizbeach is what's before Hashem and he's spritzing from that long distance of uh, 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 outside of the Mizbeach, b- meaning between the Mizbeach and the entrance. That's how he's spritzing towards the curtain, towards the um, Holy of Holies. Um, so over there it says that he is standing on the outside. Umaza al Bishashu Umaza Yochalav Zekin. So I would have thought by the by by, by the uh, Yom Kippur service it's the same. That's why it says that he went out from the mizbech. Now the mizbech is in the center of the room, so he's not going out. What it means is he's going out from being between the mizbech and the curtain. He's going out to be to to from that space. So where was he? It must be that he was inside, closer to the Holy of Holies. And between the mizbeach and the curtain, and that's where he spritzed tanya We have another version of this brisa in a brisa that says like this: "Ofnei Hashem." He did so before Hashem What does it? What does it mean? Amar Nachemi lefisha mitzina b'par mesoyer shal yom kippurim shakayin oimil lefnei manam mizbeach. Because by the yom kippur service, it says that uh, the, we find that the coin uh, was uh, the coin gadol was between the curtain. Uh, between them is Be'ach and the curtain. So perhaps also by the communal sin offering, uh, by the power Helam Dover Shel the uh, uh, also it would be uh, spritzed 
from between the curtain and the mizbeach, and the curtain and the mizbeach. Umaz al aparechas b'shashu umaze, so he's uh, he's on the inner side. Af zekain, so to the by the uh, communal sin offering. Tam aloymer mizbech teres asami mizbech teres asami lefni Hashem that the the altar is in front of Hashem, meaning he's not in between the altar and the curtain. Rather, in front of him is the altar, and then the curtain, and he's spritzing towards the curtain, sort of over the uh, mizbeach. Asher by Amid, which is in the uh, temple. Mizbeach lefnei Hashem and koyin lefnei Hashem. The mizbeach is directly in front of Hashem, not the koyin. Haketzat oy mechutz mizbeach must be that he's standing outside of the mizbeach, meaning to the east, more to the opening of the of the room. Um, so if he's coming in to the room, the first half of the room is completely empty. Then goes the altar, and then a bit further in on the on the north side, the table, south side, the the menorah, and he's. Ha, he would not have passed the midpoint of the room, meaning he's still in the first empty part of the room, and from there he's spritzing um, uh, 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 towards the curtain. So then he would uh, he would spritz the uh, or smear the the blood, uh, smear it on the four corners of the mizbeach. Taner Abban, so Brisa taught. He would uh, smear it. And go downward. Where does he begin? He starts from the northeastern corner. So again, that means he's coming from the Kodesh, passes the the Mizbeah, turns around facing the the uh, Holy of Holies, and towards his right is going to be the uh, the uh, northeastern corner of the Mizbeah, and that's where he's going to spritz first or smear first. And he, then he goes to the Rebbe's Maravis. This version says, he, um, uh, is some Israel, sorry, he's going to start by the east, s- southeast. Not like our Mishnah that said he's going to start in the northeastern side, which is his right side, but rather he's going to start by the southeast, which is his left side. Dremis Maravis, Maravis, Sfenis, Sfenis, Marachis, Mizrachis. And then he's going to go count, uh, clockwise around the Mizbeach, southeast to southwest, to northwest, uh, to northeast. Divrei Rabbi Akiva. That's Rabbi Akiva's opinion. Rabbi Yisak Lili, Rabbi Yisak Lili says, "Mekam Mizrachas Fainus." Like our Mishnah, um, he's going to start by the northeastern side, so Fainus Maravis. Then the northwestern side, Maravis Droimis, southwestern side, Droimis Mizrachas, southeastern side. Makam Shabbi Yisak Lili, Baschar Rabbi Akiva, Shem Rabbi Akiva, Paisik. Where Rabbi Yisak Lili says to begin, Rabbi Akiva says to end. And where Rebbe says to begin, that's where Rebbe Yisrael ends. The Kula Al Mamiya, Bahu Kera, and the Pagam Rishali of it. Everybody agrees the first corner he reaches, he's not going to do. Meaning, because if he's coming from the west towards the east, he should be meeting either the northeast or uh, northwest or north uh, or southwest side, but he's on the so- south. Sorry, he's on the west. So he should be encountering the western side of the Mizbeach. But he's walking past that, getting out past the Mizbeach, turning around and facing the Kodesh. What's going on? My time, Amar Shmuel says, Shmuel says, Amar Kropik says, on Pasuk, Yatzel Mizbeach. He will go out to the Mizbeach. And then after coming to the Mizbeach, he must go out beyond the Mizbeach, turn around, and that's where he begins to put the blood on the Mizbeach. And oh, Rabbi Akiva, Nakif, Derech Yamin. According to Rabbi Akiva, why is he starting in the south? If he starts in the south, uh, uh, south eastern corner, why is he not going towards the right, meaning counterclockwise? Why is he going towards his left? Don't we know as a general rule, you always in the base of Mikdash go to the right? Maybe he's disagreeing with Rami by Yecheskel. To Amar Rami by Yecheskel, Rami by Yecheskel said, Yam Asa Shloyba. Shlom Made a large uh, seat in in the uh, uh, base in the base of Mikdash. What does it mean? He made a seat. He made this enormous basin. Uh, yeah, he made this enormous basin uh, in the in the base of Mikdash, and it was uh, square, uh, it was circular on on square. Great calculations that went into it. But they were sitting on four. It was sitting on four lines. 
um, sorry, it was uh, sitting, uh, the, uh, that, that's the, the throne, sorry. It was Aymen al Shneim Asar Bakr, was sitting on 12 um, uh, bulls made out of, uh, uh, not live bulls, meaning on, on uh, 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 yun or, or, or uh, um, sorry? Statues, thank you. Aymen al Shneim Asar Bakr, Shloisha Painim Tzafayna, three with their heads northward, Shloisha Painim Yama, three with their east, uh, with, with their uh, uh, their heads westward. Shloisha Painim Negbo, three their heads southward. Shloisha Painim Mizracha, and three eastward. By Yam Aleim Milamala, and the sea, meaning this large basin with the head on top of it, was sitting on top of them. Bechol Acharein Beso, and their entire body, besides for the head, the torso, and the uh, the the back parts of the animal were all underneath, inward, meaning in the house, meaning inward, beneath that basin. Why does it tell, go, the way you see it goes, it goes from um, uh, 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 from north to west, uh, uh, to, uh, to uh, south, to east, telling you which way you turn in the base of Mekdash. You always go counterclockwise, which is to your right, La Mizrach towards uh, towards the Mizrach. So over here too, it should be to Mizrach. So Mar is the Rabbi Yecheskel. We must say that Rabbi Kiva uh, that Rabbi Yisak Lili agrees with the Rabbi Rabbi Yecheskel. Omar less Rabbi Yecheskel. Rabbi Kiva disagrees. No, even Rabbi Kiva also holds always you should turn to your right and go counterclockwise. However, here the base of Machlek is something else. Rather, the the question is, um, what are you learning from uh, inside, from the outside or not? Uh, And just like the outer Mizbeach, you're going um, outside to inside. Also, by the inner Mizbeach, you're going to be doing from right uh, counterclockwise to the right. Or you don't learn it from the outside. And the outside, you have to do counterclockwise. The inside, you don't. Okay, so let's continue with that. And um, and the Mar is going to ask, okay, so you don't have to do it counterclockwise, but why not? Why is Rabbi Kiva insisting that you do it uh, clockwise, going from the south 